You're gonna drop it on the bottom? Yeah. All right. Brent, Brent, what do we have here? We're gonna have this guy who's gonna drop silly putties to make a ball and he's gonna put it He's gonna drop it down there. Hey, hey, friends, what are you Here we go. Ooh, nice. Oh! One more time! Hi, everybody! Hi! What do we think of science? Do we love science? Yeah. <laughs> Is he coming back? Hey buddy, how do you feel about nano technology? You know a lot about it? So this is a normal traffic light. You have your LED traffic light here and your condenser bulb. This LED traffic light only takes about 25 watts, whereas the condenser bulb uh, uses 150 watts. It consumes a lot more power because it's in heating up with uh, the form of there's heat as well as light, and you also have to change your color from white light to green light so that it's a waste of energy. Uh, so, it's a lot more time uh, energy consuming, and in California, they have to save some, uh, save power outages, uh, preventive power outages by switching all the traffic lights into LED and uh, avoid it having to build two new power plants. Uh, and you can tell if you put your hands here, you can just feel the heat. Whereas you can touch here all day and it stays cool. Okay, and oh, yeah. here we have a pen with three different LEDs. They alternate from red, green, and blue. And if you look on the screen here, you can see the, uh, the graph of the different wavelengths that's shown here. And what are those wavelengths of? Uh, they're the, the color wavelengths of each LED as it alternates. The one down oh, on I this see. end is blue, the one here is green, and this is your red. Okay. So the highest ball is the red. The, high, the uh, longest one. Um, actually, the longest wavelength, wavelength. lowest energy. Okay, the longest, yeah. longest wavelength. And then here we've got an infrared. Okay? And if I put it in the beam, we'll get a peak down at this end. This is your infrared. This is the infrared. If I can ever get it lined. I saw it as I saw it. Okay. Anyway. Here we have a LED light bulb. It does not have any batteries. There's there are magnets in here and of course the oil. Shake it up and it stores energy. Um, the basic induction process, just like any other electrical generation of AC power, except here we're storing it in a capacitor as DC. And this never fades away, it stays the same. You don't have to change the magnet or anything. No, no, no it should last indefinitely. Uh, here. A different version. Oh, that's cool. This oh. one's hand crank. Sweet. And you can buy these in town here. They will also have a built in radio. You can use it as an emergency in case oh, the power cool. goes out. You can still have radio this, content. Uh, never uses battery or anything. Never needs a battery. It's all low power LEDs. That's their real selling point, is they're low in power. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's our observation of that? Uh, ran off. Ran off from the boots. All right.
and it didn't off lettuce. So both are plants, both basically the same material. Agree on that? Yeah? So the reason why this happens is not because of the material, there's something other with the leaf, other other happening with the leaf. So if you look zoomed in on the leaf, you see these tiny little pillars you zoomed in, you see something like this. All these little pillars on it. And so what happens, to a saw, the water beads up and just runs off because it can't get in between the pillars. The same thing happens with dirt also. The dirt stays on the top. And as the water rolls off, it collects all the dirt. And so, basically it's a self-cleaning mechanism for the leaf. And so, what somebody has done, or a company has done, is added this to paint. And so now people have self-cleaning paint. And so you can imagine a car being painted in this and when it rains it'll be clean. And also, if you ever see dry fit clothing, same thing, hydrophobic, so water hating. The water just beads up and runs off. So it's nano services. They are. All right. Awesome. How do you feel about nanotechnology? Well, I think nano has the potential to be really exciting in the future because it gives us the ability to start thinking about how to work with matter on a completely different scale. Um, and it has a lot of unique characteristics and properties that we don't see in the macro scale. And so we're finding a lot of really new things and the new applications will be just fantastic and will affect us in ways that we've never dreamt about. On the other hand, though, um, you also have to take all of this with a grain of salt that it might not pan out to be what we think it is. And so I'm a little bit skeptical, too, that all the hype is just hype and that it might not really do what we're predicting it might do or finding it to do. Um, and I also think we have to be really careful about the risks of nanotechnology, too, because there are all these new properties that we just don't understand everything about this. So I don't think we need to stop research on what we're doing, but I think we need to try and keep up the risk and research just as much as we keep up the um, scientific and driving research. So, so it has like, a lot of great potential, but, you know, we'll wait and see. It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress, very much so. All right. Thank you. Thanks.